Okay, uh, sixth question. Find the number of ways in which all nine letters of the word Australia can be arranged in each of the following cases. Okay, first of all, I need to list down and see that how many of these um, alphabets, I, these letters I have here. So, um, first of all, I have to see that how many A's do I have? So, the A's are going to be, okay. So, there are one, two, three, there are three A's over here, okay? So, we have three A's and then there is one U, then there is one S, then there is one T, there is one R, there is one L. Okay, all the other, they are, so ones, let me ones there, let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and three, nine. Yeah, so we have all these nine letters. So A is uh, three times there. So it says, uh, Find the number of ways in which all nine letters of this can be arranged. So this is something related to the permutations in each of the following cases. All the vowels, A, I, U, are together. So the vowels have to be together. So we have uh, three A's, this U and this I. We have to keep these five of them together, okay? So they are all together here. And then, um, the remaining four, this like one, two, three, four, and five, sorry. No, no, sorry, U is uh, a vowel. Why am I taking U over here, okay. So the remaining four uh, would be uh, anywhere. So don't confuse yourself by, by like, you know, uh, assuming that these consonants have to be together as well, okay. They can be anywhere, like, you know, you can come here, S can come here, you can have R over here, you can have L over here, okay? So mainly we have five objects being like, you know, permuted here. And then inside this box, you have um, four of them. In fact, five of them, okay? So that is gonna be five factorial. And then you have three A's being repeated here, okay? So that is, the number of arrangements we have for all the nine letters where all the vowels, they are together. And we have five vowels out of three, of which three are uh, all A's, okay? So this is gonna be five factorial into five factorial over three factorial. Please uh, uh, tell me what is, this, uh, what is this? 2400. Okay, this is 2400. And let me check the answer. And then you, if you have any question, let me know, okay? This is, uh, the answer is here. Do I have, oh, sorry, this is question number six. Okay, six A. Uh, yeah, this is 2400, so, so the answer is right, 2400. Okay, next it says, uh, do you have any question, guys? Hmm? Okay, I assume there is no question because you people are silent. So this means that there is no question. It says the letter T in the set is in the central position, and each and each end positions is occupied by one of the other consonants R, S, and N. Okay, so let me clear this. Now there are nine letters. So this T is there in the middle, okay? So this T is in the middle of this. And then it says, um, each end position is occupied by one of the other consonants. So like, you know, this end position and this end position, okay? Now, since there are two end positions and we have three options, so this is simply going to be three C two. This is, 3C2. So any um, two of those three can be fixed over here, okay? Now, um, we have used one, two, and three letters. How many are left, guys? Six are left. So this would be 3C2 into six factorial over three factorial. That is for three A's. 
please tell me what is the answer to this. Uh, this is, yeah. Can someone please tell us what is the answer here? Hmm? 360. 360. Uh, sir? Yes, Vidal. Sir, I have a question. Sir, why isn't it 3P2 and why is it 3C2? Uh, 3C2. Oh, good question. Three. C I think this should be 3P2. Yes. Yes, because the arrangements matter here. You are absolutely right. This has to be 3P2 because we are arranging them. Okay. So this uh, positioning does matter over here. So this is 3P2 times 6 factorial over 3 factorial. So now there should be, the answer should be different now. What 720. Is what is the answer? 720. 720. Now let's check the answer. Okay. Yeah, this is 720 over here. So the answer is right. Okay. So we go back. You see, that is how um, uh, you have to be very careful about all this. I did underline that arrangements and I myself forgot that thing. Okay. Now let's go on. Sir? To yes, Vida. Is it okay if we just write two factorial instead of three people? Yeah, multiply that's, that. absolute, that's absolutely fine. Like if you do that 3C2 and then you do that uh, times 2 factorial because guys, you know that this 3C2 times 2 factorial is same as 3P2. So this is up to you. Like if you had written that 3C2, then you will be like, you know, multiplying that with 2 factorial as well. Okay. So now let's go to the next part. Let's see what do we have here. Uh, yeah, this is a B part, so this has nothing to do with the A part, I guess. Okay, it says uh, Donna has two necklaces, eight rings, and four bracelets, all different. Okay, this is really important that they are all different. Obviously, they have to be different. Okay, she chooses four pieces. Now, underline this chooses. So that means we might have something kind of NCR here. She chooses uh, four pieces of jewelry. How many possible selections can she make if she chooses at least one necklace, okay? Uh, at least one necklace. One necklace and at least one bracelet. Okay, so she has to choose four. She has to choose four of them, okay? And there should be at least one necklace and at least one bracelet, okay? So we have necklaces, we have rings, we have bracelets. So see, she seems to be a very rich lady, mm. okay? So uh, we have um, two of them, we have eight of them, and where is that? Necklaces and rings. Where are the bracelets? Uh, sorry, there are four bracelets. Oh, why can I see the four bracelets there? Okay, so this is what she has. And she has to choose four in such a way that there is at least one necklace and one bracelet. Okay, so this means that the, the necklaces or the brace, bracelets can be more than one as well, okay? So let's list it down here. So she can have one from here, one from here, and two from here. She can have two from here, one from here, one from here. She can have two bracelets, uh, and then mm, one ring and one necklace. Is there any other possibility here? Hmm? She so she can have three bracelets and one ring yeah, and nothing that from is, that, that is what I was about to think. Uh, she, yeah, because rings, she can have zero rings as well, okay? So this is going to be um, zero here. This is going to be um, one here and three here. This is zero, one here, three here, and then zero, two, and two. Okay. Hmm. So this is it. This is so, so much working. I'll have to do. Is there any shorter way of doing this thing? Hmm? Hmm, yes. What if we do it the way that 
Okay, let me first find this and then I'll do that experimentation. You know what I am thinking that if, for example, we find the number where all of them are the rings. Hmm? Sir, जो आपने second last लिखा है, उसमें two तो आपके पास total है, तो three तो हम select कर ही नहीं सकते, तो आप switch कर दें bracelets और necklaces को आपस में. Yes. So this has to be oh, yeah. This is not possible, है ना? This one is not possible. But okay, now these are not too many, so let's just finish this off. Okay. So sometimes we try to be smarter and that results as a wastage of time okay now so let's do that quickly you know it's uh, not difficult to find 2c1 and a uh, 2c1 is you know that is 2 so the working would be this is going to be 2c1 times 8c2 times 4c1 plus 2c2 that is 1 okay and then times 8c1 that is 8 Times four c one that is four, and then you have plus two c one times eight c one times four c two, and then you have plus two c one plus eight sorry times eight c zero times four c three, okay, and plus finally you have two c two times eight c zero. Times four c. So there is no need to use the calculator that much. Two c one I know that is two. Okay, let me do this working here. Two c one is two. Times eight c two is twenty uh, eight. Times four plus two c two is one. Eight c two is eight. So one into eight into four. And I have two into eight into six. I'm doing all this without the calculator. And I have two into one into four. You can even skip this step, okay? Then you have um, one into one into six. This so is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So finally, we have two uh, into twenty-eight. Yeah, this one is a bigger number here. This is going to be what is this? Tell me what is the sum of all these? Twenty-four. Ah. Huh? The sum is three sixty-six. Three sixty-six. So uh, yeah, the answer is right here. Okay. So the answer is right. Thanks, God. Okay, so listing is 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 a safer way to do that. Okay, and just keep. I did write these total values at the top, and I still forgot that you know I can have three uh, necklaces. Okay, so now let's move on to the question number seven now. Okay, we try this. We read it thoroughly, and then we try this together. Okay, it says in a certain country, sixty percent of the mobile phones sold are made by company A, thirty-five percent by C, a company B, five percent made by other companies. Find the probability that out of a random sample of thirteen, whenever this total number is given, you should uh, consider the binomial distribution. Okay. It says uh, out of a random sample of thirteen people who buy a mobile phone. Fewer than eleven choose a mobile phone made by companies. So this is clearly a binomial distribution. So I would say that X is binomially distributed with N as thirteen, and then he's talking about this company A. So this becomes our probability of success. Okay, and then he says find the probability that fewer than eleven. So x is less than eleven. That is what we have to find. Okay. Now be very careful about um, keeping having or not having that equal mark here when dealing with this binomial distribution. Okay. So now this is less than eleven. So the total we have thirteen people. You have to decide that either you would be going directly for that, like from zero to ten, 
or you would do that one minus and i would i am going to go for that because we have smaller number of um, um, things happening here so i would do that probability one minus probability x is greater than or equal to 11 okay so you have to show all this working here one minus uh, probability x equal to 11 plus probability x equal to 12 and plus the probability x equal to 13. Okay, and then we have here, now you have to use your calculator. Someone please start using the calculator. So this is 13 C 11, and then you have 0.35 raised to power 11, and then you have 0.65 raised to power two plus 13 Sir? C, yes, Vida? Why are we using 0.35 as our P? Um, we have not seen that we choose by company A. So the probability is 60%. No, uh, uh, come on, what am I doing? This was for company B. Uh, like, you know, I just saw this 35% with the A. So this is a blessing in disguise for you people that I'm making, I'm making so, so many silly mistakes here. So this was 60% for the company A. Thanks for being alert, okay? So this has to be, let me change that. And this should be corrected here as well. Okay, so this is, this has to be 0 0.6 here, okay? This is 0 0.6, this is 0 0.4. Okay, so this is gonna be 0 0.6 raised to power 12 and 0 0.4 raised to power one. Plus 13 C 13 raised to power 13. And that 0.4 is for zero. I'm not writing that. Okay. Now please use your calculator and tell me what do you get? Okay, so we get this as 0.942. Let me check the answer quickly. So yeah, this is the right answer. It's 0.942. Okay. Um Next, we have to go to the, the second part. It says use a suitable approximation to find the probability that out of a random sample of 130 people who buy, you see that is again, uh, you people are being given uh, a binomial distribution with a big N over here, okay? And it says at least 50 choose. And we all have already been given, you know, the solution that how we have to find this. So that is, you, you know, you have to use that suitable approximation here. Okay, so let's do that. So I would start by saying, okay, let me use this X again. I'm sorry for using this again. Okay, now let X is going to be uh, binomially distributed with N as 130. Oh, sorry, why I'm writing 150. Uh, okay, this is 130. And the probability is again, oh yeah, now he's talking about the company B, okay? So I'll be writing 0.35 over here. That is the probability of success. And we have to find the probability that at least 50 choose that. So probability that X is greater than or equal to 50. We have to find that, okay? So you see, we have, we do have the equal mark over here. And this equal mark is really important. Uh, one, because it is a binomial distribution. And secondly, you have to approximate this as a normal distribution. So there you have to go for that continuity error there, okay? So for that purpose, you have to, um, you have to remember that this equal mark is really um, significant here, okay? So, now uh, we would be approximating this as a normal distribution. So I would say, okay, let Y is normally distributed. And I have to find these parameters here. Mu is the NP and the variance is going to be NPQ. So mu, that is NP. Please tell me what is 130 times 0.35. I'm sorry, 45.4. 45.4, okay. And then you multiply this NP with the Q, that is 45.4 times 0.65. 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0.65, 0
So what do we have? 29.575. 29.575. And just to make a quick check and to impress the examiner, you mentioned this is greater than five, this is greater than five. Um, sorry, this is not required to be, but you know that NQ should be greater than five here. This will obviously be more than five when you have these two conditions here, okay? So, um, so because of this, uh, we can really approximate this as a normal distribution. So now we are going to introduce Y over here so that Y is uh, um, normally distributed with the mean as um, 45.4, okay? And the variance is 29.4. 29.575. Okay, uh, so therefore, probability. 45.5, not 45.4. 45.5, oh, you told me four. Okay, anyhow. So probability X is more than or equal to 50 would mean probability Y is more than. Now, would that be 50.5 or 49.5? You have to decide between these two. 49.5. Yeah, this is 49.5 because that 50 is inclusive here. And that will be equal to, this is where you go for that, um, uh, I mean, standardization is going to be done here. So this would be probability Z is greater than 49.5 minus 45.5 over, many of you forget to write the square root because you, have, you do have, cal, uh, you do calculate the uh, variance here and, and here we have to uh, use the standard deviation. So that is going to be square root of 29.575, okay? So please, um, calculate all of this and tell me what do you get? 0 0.7355. 0 0.7355. Yes. Five, five. Five, five. Okay. Uh, this is good to be like, this has to be correct to three decimal places because this five is useless here. Okay. So this would be one minus phi of 0.736. That is how you will be you know, finding this from the table. So please go to the table and tell me what is this phi of 0.736? Phi of 0.736. This is 0 0.7691. And please find this, do that one minus. 0 0.2309. Point 0.2331. One, three, one, right? Yes? yes? Correct to three yes. significant figures. This is point 0.231. Okay. Let me check the answer quickly. The last, yeah, that is point 0.231. Okay. That's a great going. We have all our answers matching, Alhamdulillah. So this also ends the paper, I guess. Yes? So guys, thank you very much for staying with us, tolerating our careless and silly mistakes. See you again in the next paper. Thank you very much.